What's up, my people? Back in the yard, chasing AC issues with this Kamatsu. I've chased them. Uh, this is the third time I evaporated the system, taking it, pumped it down, and uh, it's getting expensive with the 134A. So you start learning how to how to diagnose a lot uh, a lot better when you start spending the money and doing this over and over and over. I did recharge. I put a new pump on that uh, earlier this season on the Kenworth, and that is ice cold. So I did that textbook. This one wasn't was a little. That was just a compressor. This is just. Uh, a lot more uh intricate so I, I had to go into the system and really figure out how they work so i'll walk you through it basically this machine was giving me issues it would blow cold air hot air cold air hot air cold air on their gauges the high side low side would go up down up down when i shut them off high side was way higher than low they wouldn't equalize uh, and they should be even when you shut it off. So first things I did, I knew it was blowing cold because this is gets right ice cold and then it gets hot again. It was building too much pressure. I went and got this air dryer, which did make a little bit of difference. It, it seemed like it worked for a little bit longer. It would only go about 20 minutes and then start acting up instead of five minutes, say. And I started getting a little bit of evaporation out my tube, which would where the water comes. So obviously, obviously it didn't work because there's other issues. So with reading, doing research and the gauges, how they were going up and down, there was a blockage somewhere in the system, which come to figure out it was the expansion valve. And I'll explain what that is. And I gotta give a big shout out to FridayParts.com. They knew I was going through some issues with this. They saw some uh, stories on YouTube. The, Amy got a hold of me again and said, hey, listen, you know, just replace the compressor, we'll send it to you. And, uh, so that's what I'm doing to cover bases. I don't think the compressor is bad, but it can over time because I've been pumping this down so many times. I think some of the oil was coming out. So rather than just put the expansion valve in and let it go one season and then have to replace it again, do it right the first time. So she sent me a Denso. FridayParts.com, guys, they send you OEM, genuine parts. You got to check them out. I'll put the link in the description. This is the expansion valve <clears throat> talking about. This is the old one, and I'll show you a quick test how you can test it it's with your mouth, actually, if it was bad or good. Most of these right here are on the firewall of cars, trucks. This thing was up under the bed <laughs> in the turntable. What a nightmare to get because you got to replace some four O rings, too. O rings are on the back side of these. But they're, once you find them, I mean, just take your time and do it. So basically, when you shut this down, these two gauges should be equal wherever they are. This one was high. This was this one was low. After the next morning, they were both equal. So it took that much to equalize. So when this shuts off, there's a spring and a thermostat in here, which works back and forth as the temperature changes during the day. And what happens is... If that goes bad, that doesn't know what to do. So it was building pressure, then it would let it out. So it comes in as gas, comes out the backside as liquid. This is your major component of the AC system. So all I do is blowing this. It won't blow through. The new one blows through. So that blows through because it's open and it's equalized. This is broke. So that's a quick test on your expansion valve. If you have it out, just blow in that port. If you can't blow air through there, it's bad. So what we're gonna do is tear this down now. I'm gonna take this system apart. I'll keep this, because I know it's probably good, but I'm gonna put the brand new Denzi in. Uh, comes pre-oiled. Make sure that you get one that is pre-oiled. If not, you're gonna have to add oil to it. Uh, so we're just gonna tear this down now. Then we're gonna evaporate it for, pump it down for about an hour. So those gauges look right and then we'll check the leak test for another 45 minutes if nothing leaks then we'll throw some free on in her see if she uh if my problems are uh fixed because it is about 90 degrees today on memorial day had issues with the trailer i just pulled the, the equipment this morning out of out of that one project i'm on blew two tires on the trailer on the way home so if you know anybody that is selling a 25 ton t50 triaxle trailer get a hold of me in the in my email i want to buy it all right let's get this thing off we got a little shroud here this is the 
AC I'm going to tackle first. Everything is already pumped down and, and all the 134A is out. So we don't have to worry about anything spraying us. Get this all loosened and taken care of. This is just a, looks like a cover. To go over that. We got two lines there. Then that's going to come out pretty pretty simple good thing it's not the alternator knock on wood because that alternator is on the back side all the way down in the front of this motor have no clue how am i ever going to replace that or get to it looks like you almost got to take the counterweight off the tight unit but let's get these off and we'll go from there well let's take this whole unit just come off just dropped out of the belt there's got to be a different way than that We'll inspect that. That's going to be a nightmare to go back in and line the belt up. We're going to get this shroud off. Looks like there's two bolts here. Let's do that next. Yeah, what do we got? 12 millimeter probably. Get these off. Put that, that on here. Hot, hot, hot today. Beautiful, beautiful day. Nice. Got that shroud off. Here's the belt. Set that aside. And we got 10 millimeter here. Up on top. Set up here. Hold these two lines and I think that's huh. That's it. Or am I seeing something different here? Yeah, it looks like I don't know. We'll get these off and I think it's gonna come right off in my uh hands here, but they're still bolts here which are on a different bracket I wonder what the heck happened here someone else was in here before me most likely trying to diagnose this that ain't that size one thing it's hot out so it's good that you're gonna you get better readings on the gauges when the temperature's hot okay we'll pull these be careful because there's o-rings in there and I don't have new ones so we're gonna save that like that. Okay, that's that. So after this, this whole system will be new besides obviously evaporators and radiator stuff like that. But we know they're good because I already pressurized the system. Not, there was no leaks before. So let's just pull this off and see what is going on here. Okay, this is line still hooked up. I am gonna just pull this because I know that's gotta come off don't know why it's not attached to nothing this should be attached to something looks like that's weird won't know until I get this off Gosh, can you guys even see me sorry about that always been always doing that to you all right so the AC pump is off Besides a little doobie here. Let's get this all through there. Come on. Come on. What are you doing to me? What do you got? Are you coming out or not? Huh. It's got to go through there? I can't see. Let me pull it. No, 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 no. What do you got? What are you doing to me? Oh, I've got a little bracket there. Why don't you guys tell me? You guys can see it better than I can. All right, a little bracket for the wire. Let's set that there. All right, there is one AC pump. Like I said, this is probably good, but me pumping it down a bunch of times, I was getting oil on the bottom of the lines, and I'm afraid I pumped the oil all out of here, and this will probably last another six months, and it will be done. Yeah, I mean, I guess that was it. There was no other parts or bolts to go in there. That's pretty cool. I mean, pretty quick system. You'd think... You know, AC's got a bolt to this, but then this bolts to that, and then that bolts to that. So that's its own bracket up in the air, and then the AC bolts to that. So theoretically, I didn't have to unbolt that, and I'm going to put the bolts back in right now. Just had to loosen it for the belt, but I didn't have to take it down. So it's good to know. Easy system. Thank you. Thank you, Kamatsu. Put them bolts in. Then all I gotta do is put four bolts on and this thing's ready to go. Should be back in business. Put the shroud back on.
tighten these up hand tight first. All right, let's get the new pump in there. I'm dropping parts left and right. Let's get the new pump in there. And as soon as I get this bolt snugged up, it's easier to do it without the pump in there. So I put a new motor into the little roller, which I was going to film that. And then, you know, you get it. It was raining real bad. I did it in the rain the whole day outside in the rocks, you know, and, uh, Look at that. That's nice. The way they got that mounted, huh? Then all you do is you got to do this to loosen or tighten that belt. Just pivot. So it's pretty cool. All right. So, yeah, I put a new motor, Honda motor, in that little bow mag, and she's nice. Electrical was a little, gave me trouble because you had to get a whole new ignition system, keys, and all that. And I got it running and all that. And then the vibrator didn't work, and the, the lock didn't come off for the to move the drums. But then I end up getting it. But it's tough working out, not having shelter. Especially working in all these rocks. You drop sockets, nuts, bolts, uh, O-rings. Good luck trying to find them. Everything blends in those rocks. All right. So this is nice that it's this, this kind of access. But like I said, that alternator is down in the front down there. You have to do a big teardown just to get to that. I don't, I, I haven't looked into that yet. I just hope I never have to. Give this a little snuggy dug with the that, then finish it off by hand. Because we do not want to strip anything. Let's see, and snug them in. And then, uh, yeah, Denzo Denzo. All right, let's get our clip on ac's all mounted and tight get this wire clip on nice little bracket yeah so can't thank amy enough from fridayparts.com make sure you guys go over there it's simple easy website you just pipe type in your machine that you want you can put the serial number the part number the machine or just the part and everything they got will pull up I don't care if it's a low mower just go ahead and type it in and uh it will show you you know if there's 150 parts for that machine like my kubota my kubota skid steer you know they're hard to get parts for i type in kubota svl 90 it shows me everything that they offer i mean rebuild kits for the engine injectors and i know they're perfect had a tough time finding all that stuff you had to go through the dealer but uh this was all oem stuff you guys check them out I'm not lying it's the third time I dealt with them, and uh, the shipping was quick, too. Three days I had this. Two, three days I had this at the, at the house. All right, so we got that on, that on, that on. Let's pull these. This is the... Oh, drop that down in there. Nice. At least it went to the belly pan. I heard it. Let's, let's focus here. Get this right so we don't break nothing. No O-rings here. I'm going to just wipe any crud. I got on there off, and they should just snap in nice and easy, like so. All right, that was so easy. Yeah, looking nice, looking nice. All right, there we go. We put our 10 millimeter bolts. What do I got here? What's going on here? They're not the bolts, okay? Let me find some different ones. These ones, bad. I'm trying to rush through this. I don't know why. But, uh, and I'm not like, it's not like I pre rehearsed or do these every day. So, what you see is what you get. You're seeing it the first time I am. Um, you know, putting, putting bolts here isn't a good idea. They drop down in there. Say goodnight until you get a magnet or remove belly pans. But there's so much things that that stuff could get hung up on. The chances of finding them are rare. So, get yourself a magnet dish and you'll be good. Tighten these up. You ain't got to go crazy because it is just in aluminum. They got O-rings. This is your high side. This is your low side. You can't screw that up when you go to put these gauges on because they're two different sizes. All right, so here's your high side gauge. They just clip on, you know. Same thing with the low side. Just boom, boom, boom. This is the air dryer that I replaced. Um, these are sight glasses. 
that you could see and watch the, the watch the refrigerant run through. Let's go down below and show you what I did there before we start to pump down. I don't know if you're gonna see this. Let me grab my light here. All right. So that's the evaporator way up in. Uh, there's two lines, and it's got a, a electronic going to it. Uh, the one line for a reading. That's probably why my my AC kept shutting off and have a warning signal, which is good. Komatsu built that in, so you don't burn the pump out. Normally, you would burn the pump out. Like I said, this has been going on a while, um, but it's up in there. So this was a skid plate I had to take out here, and you could reach up in there. They made it so you could get it, but it is, it's difficult. And it's difficult in cars too. I mean, they're on the firewall and they're and they're into a tight spot always. All right, everything's tight. All make sure everything is tight. You know what I mean before you start drawing it down. Otherwise, it's not. It's, you're wasting your time. We're gonna turn this on and just got it running off my Honda generator. Let this run for about an hour. You gotta open your gauges up and you will see. See that draw that down? Sucking it out, open them bolts wide open. And these gauges will get down to that negative one or 30, whatever you want, want to say it, negative one or 30. And once it's all the way down there, about you know 45 minutes to an hour, you can close these off. And once we close those off, we're going to let it set another hour. And if these start to fade up any which way, it means two things. There's either moisture in the system, a blockage in the system, or there's an air leak. So you can't have those gauges move at all after an hour. Once that's done, then we start adding the refrigerant to this line here. Um, we take that off and we hook the, the bottles right to it. This takes three pounds. So, or 2.9, so uh, I'll get four cans, four little cans, uh, 16 ounce cans, and that should be the weight. There's 16 ounces in a pound, so four will do it. For my regular subscribers, brand new Honda motor in there, nice and nice. All right, about an hour later, let's check these gauges. We're down to that mark where we need to be. We're gonna let it go a little more and then we're gonna, we're going to uh, shut these off and let them set and see if they move. I think we're gonna be good. So we got our four cans of refrigerant, uh, 12 ounces, 16 ounces in a pound. So you got 12 is that's 48. That will give you your three pounds. So like I said, I've been dealing with this since I've owned this machine, just adding it in there, and then all of a sudden it would shut off to be a, a, a code on the monitor, which like I said, is good on Komatsu, because it wouldn't let me overpressurize the system. I've had that where you overpressurize them and just blow a line or wreck, a, wreck the uh, pump, the compressor. So again, this is the, the first thing I replaced, and that didn't fix it. So if you're running high pressures, and it's fluctuating there's a blockage somewhere if it's going hot cold there's a blockage which is that evaporator or not evaporator let me get my let me get my words right my expansion valve um the evaporator is actually one of these right here these condensers so um and this is the air dryer phone call all right it's been about 45 minutes and nothing has moved so everything is pressurized and good. Got my can, you shake it up, got your T, you screw that all the way down in. And now once you screw that up, refrigerant is gonna suck back into there. Do not open this high side, leave this high side closed. And we're just gonna open this up slowly. You don't wanna fly it open because it's gonna pin. But first we gotta start the machine, turn the AC on, and uh, then we'll come back and we'll purge this. These are self-sealing cans. I need to switch it to my other adapter. They're not like the old cans where you pierce them. So once we get this in there, we open this up. That should allow fluid to go. At least at this point. There we go. There's the air. That should allow the refrigerant to go to there. Now we're going to open up the high side. There we go. Let me turn the AC on. Because of this 
safety system on this. I gotta throw some refrigerant into this first. I gotta get some refrigerant in here. It won't allow me, and I know it's probably not going in, or maybe it is, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not an AC guy. I'm doing uh, doing this with you. So, this Komatsu has a safety system. If it doesn't detect refrigerant, it shuts it off. So, it's not like the regular conventional ones where boom, it will kick on when you start pumping it in. But it's going in, and this is getting cold. And I can see it going in right now. So, we're going to turn on the machine that should have enough to get something going. Might be uh, wrong on that. Might be 
1.9, like two, because what was that, two pounds? It was, everything was working, this was ice cold, now this is hot, this is hot, and this goes black again. Because it's not kicked on. So something's going on here, and you see the, the what it reads in here, AC control air. It does that when it gets too either low on refrigerant or too high on refrigerant, the pressures, and that's got to be that electronic module under there. Everything is replaced. I, I, I blew air through here. There was no blockages in any piping. I, I don't know what it is. I think maybe it's just too much, too much refrigerant in it. All right, I got it going back on. And I got these gauges where they need to be. At 85 degrees out right now, it should be about 250 to 270 on the high side. And that's right where I'm at, about 250. But the low side is reading about uh, 30, where it could be 50, you know, 45 to 55. So not certain on there. It's definitely blowing. This is working good. What I did was I just hooked up one of these that you get from the store with the can stuck it on the high side then it, it will read the gauge will read it was all the way in the red you just hit that button and it, it lets out freon i was throwing it in the jug right there just freon in that jug or whatever this stuff is 134a but i let it go on the jug and um you lower it until she kicked back on you know what i mean and then you can feel everything work so I think my guess is right that Kamatu had the poundage. He, he really didn't know. He just emailed me, hey, so I, he goes, I'm being told three pounds. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to let this go like this for now because it's blowing cold air. I'm not sure if it's uh, throwing liquid out the bottom yet, but right now we got cold air and it's not fluctuating because it, the needles aren't even showing it's fluctuating. We got air coming out, but no no liquid yet, which we need liquid. So we're gonna shut this door and let it run. See what happens. Maybe I'll track it around. But um, this is low, I think, on this side. This side's reading good, but... It's still cold in that part. This is ice cold, so... It's better than it was. I don't know if it's 100%. Um, time will tell to see if it shuts off or not. Um, but the, I know there's no blockage. That was that uh, expansion valve. So I'm going to take this as a fix. Hopefully you guys got something out of this. AC systems are complex, but once you really dig into them with your head, they're really not. There's only a certain amount of parts, you know. If everything's tight, no air leaks. You know, that's the biggest thing. And contamination. So, uh learning a little bit about I don't even want to learn about this but I am because you know I, everything I have is just about AC now so but the Kenworth blown cold there next fix 20 ton trailer gonna need all tires for that the tires aren't even that old so I don't know what happened I, I had the machine back a little further than it should have been and a little more axle pressure I guess pull them out but uh if anybody knows of a trailer for sale let me know. Hit me up in the comments and we'll get in touch. Thanks. Instantly when I shut it down, these are starting to equalize. It took, it didn't equalize till the next day. Um, these gauges are going to line right up within five minutes, which is good. Again, guys, FridayParts.com. Check them out. I appreciate it. Thank you, Amy. See you guys on the next one.